got our halls cleared, swept, and mopped. We're ready to put some buffing shine on it during these holidays because these floors have took a beating of the traffic. So this is what we call a buffer. Some people call them furnishers, buffers. They have all kinds of names. But what we're going to do is we're going to change the pad. This pad here is soiled and really dirty. So we're gonna put a brand new pad on. And some of these machines, the middle spins out, but this one here has a little clip. And you mash the button. And then we'll line this pad up. And these things can be a little bit aggravating to get on. If these are screw type, you've got to screw and then you got to push down on it. This here, he's got some clips. I'm going to bump it on there. Just like that. Okay, that suck in right there where that won't scrape the floor. And you can tell this pad right here, it's a little bit soiled on this side, but it's very soiled on this side. So let's go bust some floors. It's always a good idea to make sure that your machine cores are in very good condition. That you have your ground plugs. And uh, there's no naked places where you've got into the uh, machine with a pad and cut it or anything. You want to make sure that your core is in good shape. If it's not, you need to get that fixed and report that. I'm a kind of fix it my suffer type guy. I fix these machines a lot of times. I like to find a good plug that's behind my machine, and I like to work toward the next plug in that I need to use. Uh, that way the cord is behind me as much as possible and out of my way. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is this, is when you're using this machine, is not to stretch this cord so tight that you're pulling on this right here and pull these wires loose up in this. So this is a problem I had uh, a couple years ago. We have three buffers and all three buffers were broke down and I had to go in there and split these wires and rewire every bit of this inside of this uh, harness right here. And all it was was just the fact that this machine was being pulled too tight on this and then on that end where it plugs into the wall, just simply the fact of not wanting to walk back down there, we have people jerking it out of the wall and breaking the plugs off and stretching the wires. Now, we have got the pad pre-soaked. You just raise the lever up and adjust that handle. Okay, adjust that handle where it's comfortable. I like mine to hit mine along my belt line. You lock that handle down and get this cord behind you and get your starting point. We're going to be going into the office and we're going to come back out here and do the hauls. But what I do is I spray an area of spray buff to get me started because I'm going to have to work this machine up and in and out right here in these corners to get me started. You don't want to ever spray too much spray buff because if it dries on the floor, you're going to have these little spots. It's going to be hard to get out. So just spray as much spray buff in areas that you can handle at one time. The machines have a safety switch on them. Some of them are here, here. They're in different places. But that handle's not going to pull in without that safety switch out <clears throat> being pushed. And I always like to start my machine with a buffer up off the floor just a little bit. And I push that safety switch in and pull the handle. Okay.
buffing a when you're buffing a small area like this office, there's a lot of back and forward motion and turning because you just kind of have to work in these tight areas. But when we get out in the hall, I'm going to show you how it's a little bit easier to uh, you know get rolls going and buff a larger area at a time. Okay, so that we're going to do is we're going to do hauls. In doing hauls, this cord is probably your worst enemy in doing hauls in an untied shoestring. I'll fix that too. But anyway, I always like to start to the left and go to the right. I'm plugged up in our, on the left and I'm going to work toward that plug in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this cord on this side and I'm going to go right here next to the wall and work all the way down to my cord. Then move my cord over on this side of me where I'll be working away from the cord. Okay? And the time is you. I did learn something in first grade or kindergarten. I learned how to tie a knot. Alright. <clears throat> now, spray some buff. Spray buff. down to my plug-in. I've got my cord against the wall. I've got a little area of work here at the end of the hall that I can turn around and now start buffing my hall. If you want to buff left to right, right to left, but I like to go, you know, and back down my hall twice. I like to do everything twice in case I've missed anything.
probably the hardest thing to me about the bow is getting your starting place because you're, you're trapped in this corner wherever you start in a hall you're going to be have a starting point if you have a doorway or something that you're against that you've got to be able to get started now that we have started we've got a starting point of course behind us there's nothing behind us we can really get these floors buffed at a more rapid speed now one thing that you have to keep in mind is this <clears throat> is that when you're buffing a floor is you don't want to buff up too close to your baseboards because if you do you're going to get little marks on your baseboards and you don't want to do that <clears throat> you know you're going to bump things from time to time dust is going to fly where you're going to tire pad up on a door stop or something like that but you really want to be careful and not bump those baseboards another thing is when you're spraying spray buff especially at this school because you see all these murals that they have they paid like really high dollar money to have these painted on the walls so really good detail work is uh not to spray spray buff on the walls even if you didn't have this any color walls that you have it would show up and it would just look really tacky you know, like something was splattered on the walls we have a little bit of that problem with you know splatters from garbage cans food and stuff anyway but i try to keep those in front of mechanical doors to try to keep that down so buff is not hard I'm fixing to show you how easy it is. My 11 year old son, he's not quite 11 yet, but he's fixing to be. Uh, he knows what to do. He's real good at this stuff himself. Always when you run the buffer and you stop the buffer, always make sure that the pad is stopped turning before you let go of the handles. Now, I'm about halfway down my hall, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this pad over. As you can see, that pad is pretty soiled right there, so I'll take the clip off. Brand new on the other side. Be enough to finish our job. Okay. Go ahead and pre-soak our pad again because we're starting with a new side, so we want to pre-soak it. And if I take a long break or if I don't finish and my machine's been sitting overnight, I always want to pre-soak this pad again and get it wet. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and change the spray buff out. The system's almost empty. And what I do is when I get down on this bottle a little bit, or if I start adding bottles, I add this to my other bottles that way I don't waste product but there's hardly enough in this bottle to keep spraying it's having a hard time picking it up so good time when you uh, change your pad turn it over you know go ahead and change that spray buff it's getting close to being empty now let's get back at it
Okay, now that I have my hauls buffed, I have something that I need to do when I get done buffing the hauls, and that is to go back and to sweep around the edges and dust mop my hauls. Because even though I've done that before I started buffing and I, my mop before I started buffing, there's this thing that uh, is called pepper, because that's kind of what it looks like, plus along with all the other dust, bunnies and all that kind of stuff that blows up from under coffee machines and tables and things like that it might be sitting in the hall i clear the hall out but i don't clear it out completely like we would on stripping i'm not going to move the coffee machines I'm just going to move like the breakfast bags the rugs the garbage cans you know stuff that's on rollers but everything else is pretty much stationary i just leave it there and a lot of dirt and dust and stuff blows out from under that so i want to show you that right here stuff right here that's like the dirt that comes off your floor from buffing it, it kind of looks like pepper but it's just it's just dirt and there's some particles from the dusting <clears throat> there's some particles in there also from the buffer and i could say some lance some hair and all that so that's not too bad you know for haul as big as i got but the floors look really nice really nice and shiny you see the lights reflecting in the floors. Gives it that pop, fresh look that you can do during the holidays or when you have time. Just really makes your school look clean and fresh. Now I gotta go back and put everything back in the halls and clutter the halls up with everything. I really like that shotgun look, just that just clean, fresh look, but just can't stay that way. That's just not reality. So I hope this uh, video has, you know, kind of hits you with uh, on buffing floors. Uh, I had someone make a comment about, you know, when I make a video on buffing floors. And it was from somebody who lived up north and they have a lot of salt. I don't know how to deal with that. Uh, that's out of my category. I know how to deal with a lot of rain and mud, sand, because that's what we have here in the south. And it can also wreak very much havoc on your floors. I feel for you guys, it has to deal with a lot of salt and stuff. I know we have put some salt down here uh, when we've had some mice and stuff here. I speak people in the south don't know how to deal with that. I know y'all laugh at us up north. But anyway, uh, when I've had to deal with just that little bit of salt on my floors, yeah, it's a mess and it tracks everywhere and it will flat eat a floor up. I know that for sure. So, you know, whatever kind of buffer you use, whatever kind of pad you decide to use, you know, I use a hog hair pad. You can use a white polishing pad, but I really like to use those kind if I'm doing something in between coats of whack. If I have a haze on the floor, you know, when I'm waxing or something, I want to polish that floor up. Uh, if the humidity is really high, then white pads really come in handy to make that floor pop. But as far as getting down there and getting this grime and this uh, real heavy buildup, you know, it's kind of like your car. You know, your car gets oxidized you know, from weather and you have to wash it and wax it to keep it up. Well, our floors are the same way. And uh, sometimes you look at the floor without floor doesn't have any wax on it. But when you when you start buffing it and it starts bringing that shine back up, it heats that wax up, man, it really does a good job. Uh, I really wish I had one of them propane buffers. Uh, I don't know if I'm man enough to run one of them. I know you have to keep that thing moving or it'll burn a place on the floor is what I've heard. Never used one personally. All I get to use here in the school is just these old electric but it took me 10 hours to do this haul between the time that I put the first dust mop on it and uh, done the edges, mopped, buffed, re-dust mopped it and to this point to put it back together. It took me about 10 hours to do this. But it makes your job so much easier throughout the school year, throughout the school week and your every day on a nice fresh buff floor. This right here is going to hold up for a while. Uh, yeah, it's going to get scuffed up and everything, but it sure makes it a whole lot easier to maintain, and keep clean, and keep it looking good. Because when I run an automatic scrubber back on here, it's going to, you know, maintain its shine for a little while. So, I hope this really helps you a whole lot. Remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and go out there and take out some garbage. Clean some bathrooms, dust mop some floors, because you know when them kids get back, in about five minutes after they get back, you're definitely going to have to do it again. Have a great day.